Hey developers, have you ever looked at a form and thought maybe there's a better way of doing this? Well, I have. So today I'm going to show you this really cool NES form I created. We're going to take a look at some ways you can set up the form and maybe some ways you may not have thought of using Vue. And also we're not going to be using any third party libraries. We're basically using HTML, CSS and Vue and that's it. So yeah, let's take a look. Hey, and if you're interested in Vue or me, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I put a link below where you can get a free cheat sheet on Vue.js. So just check that out. Yeah, and let's go ahead and begin. All right, so here is the form I went ahead and created. I called it Vue Form Test. This is using, by the way, a NES CSS library, which kind of makes it look like that old school NES games, which is pretty cool. But essentially we have an input at the top. Then we have this here where you can switch between what gender you want and then you can put job, fighter, druid, sorcerer. And when you click submit here, it'll bring up a dialogue pop-up box which then kind of just shows you everything you select. So let me show you the code and we can deep dive into this a little bit more. I went ahead and started the code for you. You can see here's the, uh, I'll put a link to the GitHub where I have all this code if you like, or a gist. And you can see here, I'm just using Unpackage to, for my CDN, I'm bringing in Vue 3, but you can, this certainly would work in Vue 2 as well. And I just have a, a very simple form here. Here's my inputs and I have my radio buttons and the select statement and that's it. And then I created my Vue app here, which is, has basically nothing, but I had this gender, name, and job. First thing I wanna show you guys is how you would maybe just get this up and running the normal way you would normally do it in a Vue app. What I would normally do in something like this is I would maybe perhaps add a V model here. And this is typically what I see everybody do when they are working with forms and I'll call this one name, then I would make sure that's right up here. And then on this one, these are radio buttons. So maybe I call this gender and I'll make sure I edit to every single radio button. Just copy and paste that three times. And then last but not least is the select statement. And when this one, I'll just call a uh, job. I have three V models here. And now I have to uh, get the dialogue up and running. So right here, I have a button and I've seen this all the time. People don't want to deal with submissions and I don't, and I'll come back to this in a second, but let's say I just change this to type button and now I can just add a click handler on it and I'll call it uh, clicked. Some people call it on clicked, whatever you want to call it. And then on my on clicked, I'll just make sure it works. I'll add on clicked here and then I'll console log you know, this dot gender, this dot name, and this dot job, just to see if it works. And let's see if that does. So I made the updates here. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna open up my console. So I'll bring that up here, here at the bottom so you can see it. And let's say I put mail, I'll name myself, I don't know, Bobby, since I already named that in the past. And I'll call mage and I'll hit submit. Cool, so I see female, Bobby, and mage. So I, definitely I've set up the form correctly. If I want this submit.name to work, uh, I can do this. So if I have, since I did this trick here, there's this dialog, I can actually add a ref to this. Um, so this, I don't like using refs very often in Vue, but it's basically a way to get a reference to it. And I think this, in this case, this will be fine. I'm just gonna call it dialog. And then in this on clicked, I'll do this dot dollar sign refs dot dialog dot, I think it's called show, refresh it. I'll try it again, Bobby, other, mage, submit. Cool, so now here is my modal pop-up. And by the way, this is all the NES. And yeah, I'm good, I have name, it says other, gender, Bobby, job, mage. Oops, I think I have a bug in here. I put name, this is supposed to be name, and this is supposed to be gender. So let's try that again. So Bobby, and I'll do other, and fighter, mage, submit. And let me put that again, Bobby. If I can type correctly, other, mage, submit. Cool, Bobby, other, mage. So you may have already, if you've been watching closely, you may have noticed an issue right away, but cool, I have it working. And some people just leave it like this. But one of the problems is that, you know, we're using forms, so we should deal with submissions. And that's very important because if I hit enter here, you can see here, it went ahead and did a submission for us and uh, it just cleared everything out. One other way, one way to fix this, let's make this a little bit better, is on our form up here at the top is we would add in a submit handler. So this gets triggered whenever the form is submitted. And then we can put something in here. So we're gonna come back down. I'm not gonna call this on clicked. I'm gonna call it submit. Right away, we don't really need a click handler on our button. So if we go back to our button here, see so we have this click handler. I'm gonna delete this click handler here. Instead of doing type button, I'm gonna do type submit. 
So let's see what happens when we do that. So now we have a form. We have a, we're looking for the submit handler and we're gonna do it to submit. And then we our button is type submit and then we have our submit down here. So let's see what happens. So if we put a name in, female, and pick a job and we click submit name. Uh, you see there's another problem. It kind of showed for a second and then it disappeared because it's submitting the event. And you can see here right at the top, it added all this stuff at the top. So if we delete this and we try it again, because um, this is typically how we used to in non-single page applications, we would submit information to a server and it would add it, prepend it to the top of a form. So obviously we don't want that. So the next thing you need to do is we can do it two, two different ways. We know anytime you do the submit here, it actually submits the event as the first parameter and we can do something called prevent default, but there is a nice little trick you can do here. Um, if you do dot prevent here, it'll actually prevent it from doing the default submission of the form. So let's see if that works. So we'll do Bobby, female, and it'll submit. Cool, now it's working, it didn't do the form submission at all, and it looks like it's okay. And if you hit enter here, uh, yep, still working fine. So you can hit the button or submit, and, or hit enter and do a submit and event and it works. But this is where I was thinking like, is there a better way of doing this? Cause now I have these V models everywhere and yeah, I could probably add some more, some more ch type checking and things like that or checking the inputs, but maybe I can, uh, I don't need these V models. So let me show you another way to do this. So I'm gonna delete these V models. I'm gonna delete them all throughout the app. Okay, I think I got rid of all of them. Okay, they're all deleted. And instead I do have this nice thing, this event that gets passed in. So if I just do a console log on this event and take a look at it, if I put something here, female, may, druid, you can see here I have a submit event at the bottom. It's probably a little bit hard to see. I'll make it a little bit bigger. But I have the whole event and the whole event has a target and the target has forms and each one of these has values in it. So I have the values of every single thing in here. Now I could, uh, if I wanted to, I could use some JavaScript and single go into each one of the the events and target the form events and and grab them all. But there's a better way, and I'll show you it. So inside this submit, so I'm going to run this console. Uh, I'm going to do a const and I'm going to destructure it. I'm going to check out the name, the gender, and the job, and I'm going to use this object from entries. So I'm going to be iterating over this, and I'm using this new form data. And now I'm going to put the event target in. And what this does is it basically the form data it works on all the browsers. If you look at um, can I use, so it's it's highly supported, except maybe some really older IE11 or IE10. But you can it takes the data in the form and it kind of puts it in a suitable format. If you use object from entries you can essentially grab each individual piece out of it and destructure it out of it eas easily like this. Uh, one caveat when you're using form data, make sure you create proper forms and proper forms would require the inputs to have names. So you have to make sure you have a name because otherwise you're not gonna be able to do this correctly. So let's take a look at this. So now I have this and I could do something, I can just go ahead and assign it one by one. This.gender equals gender and this.job equals job. And let's see if it works now. If I put in, refresh it, put in Bobby, other, and mage, and submit. Cool, so now our form is still working and we've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. We no longer are using a bunch of V models. We're using the event data as it should be used. And we can now uh, the data and submit it to whatever backend resource we want. And it just makes things a little bit cleaner. I think uh, it's definitely not for all situations. There's definitely times you want to have events in there, uh, V models to be able to take a look at your form data. Another thing you can do is you see out here, I could just hit, I can just delete this out and hit enter and it just kind of submits a bad form. Well, I, there's ways of getting around that too. So like the first thing I would do, if you want just very simple form validation, without having to bring in a third party library or to look at every single input and do like uh, checks on, on every keystroke basically. So you can do something like this. First obviously is add a required. So I'm gonna add a required to my input and then a required to the uh, select statement. I don't care much about the, uh, the radio buttons because they're kind of default to one. But now if I hit enter here, 
I get, please fill out this form, um, which is good. So now I can't submit it and it gives me an error as well. And so if I do type in something here, put female and then submit it, now I get please fill and please select an item in the list. So at least now I have some better error checking coming from the browser that I need to fill everything out. Now, if you're like me, you're like, well, this is easily defeated. I could just put a bunch of blank spaces and then select a job and it works. Uh, you can do patterns too. So here is an example of a pattern. I can add in pattern here, I'll make it in the middle here. I'll make a pattern and this pattern will equal dot star uh, any spaces dot star. And if I did that right, what it's gonna do is it won't let you put in just blank spaces because it won't match the pattern. So please match the requested format. So there, once again, I've been able to do just some little bit of HTML validation without having to bring a whole library in and just makes the form a little cleaner and, and less stuff you had to bring in. Now there's one other thing you can do is if I wanted to change the errors that it's coming from here, so instead of having, let's say I re, uh, refresh this, instead of saying, please fill out this field, I could bring in something called this on input, this setup validity. So on every input error, I can set a custom validity me message. So I can just type in something like, enter a real name, no blank, something like that. Oops, it's on invalid, on invalid not an input. And if I do this now, it says enter real name, no blank. So now I've added even more like custom error messages. And I believe this works in Firefox and Safari as well. All right, so I hope you guys learned a little bit uh, in this demo that I created. Once again, you can download it for yourself. Also make sure you check out um, below. You can sign up for my mailing list. You can learn all about Vue. I do give Vue tips, I view courses, things like that. I really appreciate it. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.